Hi everyone, today's lesson is, is it a function? So take out your lesson worksheet, which looks like this, so that you can follow along as I go through the examples. Okay, here's the problem. Determine whether or not each table, graph, or map shows a function, explain how you know. So first of all, a relation is any set of x and y values. So let's highlight that, because this is something kind of new. And as long as you have some x and y values, you have what we call a function. Sometimes those x and y values will be given in ordered pairs, which is what we're used to. Sometimes we'll see them on a table, we'll see them in a graph, we'll see them on a map. So these are all the different ways that you can see x and y values. Now, some relations are also functions. And the way that we know a relation is a function is the x values do not repeat. So a function is a relation that has no repeating x values. Okay, this is a very, very easy lesson. So let's try not to make it confusing because sometimes that happens, right? Sometimes it's, it gets a little confusing for the students and I don't really understand why because this is a pretty easy lesson. All right, first of all, we've got some ordered pairs in our table. If I were to rewrite these, right, I could write them on the side, or I could just kind of put parentheses around them because they're already in order, the x value and then the y value. So this just means, if I have a table, this just means my ordered pair is negative 1, positive 3. The second ordered pair is positive 1, positive 6. This ordered pair is positive 2, positive 10. And this last ordered pair is positive 5, positive 14. So this is a relation, just a set of x and y values. Now we're gonna decide if it's a function. So all we do is we look at the x values, right? It is all about the x. We do not care about y at all right now. So I'm gonna look at these values right here and I'm gonna see if any of them are repeating. I've got a negative one, a positive one, a positive two, a positive five. None of those are repeating, right? They are all different. So I'm gonna write a little note here that we've got no repeats. And that means that this is absolutely a function because none of my x values are repeating. This is called a map, the second example. This is something that you're probably unfamiliar with. When you have a mapping like this or a map, the first oval is showing the x values, the second oval is showing the y values. And I'm going to list these ordered pairs on the side this time just so we can look at them. So the arrows tell us which x goes with which y. So this first ordered pair is positive three, positive two. This second ordered pair is five, zero. This next ordered pair is seven, two, right? Because that seven is being matched up with the two. And then I also have another ordered pair. I've got seven, four. And again, we are only looking at the X's, right? We do not care about the Y's right now all we're looking at are the x's. So I check them, see if I have anything repeating. So hopefully you notice that we've got two sevens here, right? I've got a x value of seven in this ordered pair. I've got another x equals seven in this ordered pair. That means this is not a function, right? So I'm gonna write a little note here that this is not a function. And then to explain it, the reason it's not a function is because x equals seven, right? That's x equals seven right there, repeats. So that's the reason why. All right, now sometimes we're gonna have our function shown on a graph or our relation shown on a graph, which is the case here. This curved graph right here, this curved line is actually called a parabola. We are gonna check each vertical line. Now, you might be like, what the heck does that mean? So let me explain that to you. First of all, the vertical lines are these lines right here on our graph. So if we look at our graph, it's made up of a bunch of vertical lines, it's made up of a bunch of horizontal lines. We're only gonna look at the vertical lines because the vertical lines are gonna show us if our x values are repeating. All right, so let's look at our first vertical line here. So I'm gonna draw a vertical line on my graph Whoops, right here. And I'm gonna look at the point that I have on this graph or the points that I have on this graph that fall on that vertical line. So if I look at my curved line here, right, the given line, the black line, and my vertical line, it crosses like right about here. 
So if I was going to write an ordered pair for this point right here, I might call this negative 4, negative 2. I know that's not an exact ordered pair, but I might say that's negative 4, negative 2, right? Close enough. All right, so then I'm going to look at another point. So first, let's draw another vertical line, right? And I'm just going to, whoops, I'm just going to go right across from left to right on my graph here. So here's another vertical line. And I'm going to look and see how many points I have on this vertical line. Well, here's my graph. Here's my vertical line. I see one point right about there. So that's negative three, maybe positive a half, right? I'm just estimating. All right, so that's good. I don't have any other points on the negative three, right? All I have is this negative three, positive a half. One point, that means my x is not repeating. Okay, what we're doing here is it's called the vertical line test, right? We're checking our graph by looking at all the vertical lines. Okay, here's another vertical line. So again, I look at this vertical line. I'm going to look at the graph they gave me and this vertical line. I'm going to see that it intersects right about there. So I'm going to say that's about negative 2, positive 2. Okay, I don't see anything else on this vertical line here. I have no other points at x equals negative 2, right? All I have is negative 2, positive 2, which is right here. So that's good. And you're just going to keep going all the way through your graph. Right, so I'm just going to keep drawing vertical lines through my whole entire graph here. And we're just going to look at them going all the way across. And we're going to make sure that the graph that we were given, which in this case is this curved line, right, this parabola, that it does not cross over any of my vertical lines more than one time. Okay, so let's go back over here. When x equals negative 4, my curved line only crossed at one point. When x was negative 3, it only crossed at one point. When x was negative 2, it only crossed at one point, right? We only ever want to have one point on a vertical line. When x equals negative 1, it crosses right here, one time, that's it. When x equals 0, one time, right? So if I keep doing this all the way through my entire graph, I'm going to see that on every vertical line, there is only one point. Okay, I just noticed that my last vertical line turned black here. Let's make that pink. There we go. So this passes the vertical line test. If I were to write ordered pairs for every single one of these points that I just drew, all of my x values would be different. This point would be negative 4, negative 2. This would be negative 3, positive 1 half. This would be negative 2, positive 2. This would be negative 1, positive 2.75 maybe. This would be 0, 3. This would be 1 and positive 2.5. This would be 2 and 2. This would be 3 and 1. This would be 4 and negative 1. Okay, so you can see that all of the x values are different. And that means that this passes the vertical line test. So this is, in fact, a function. And the reason is because there is only one point on every vertical line. Now I'm going to show you an example of one that doesn't work like that so that you can see like, what the difference is. All right, so let's look at the bottom here. So we're going to tell whether or not these are functions. All right, so the first one, number one, we have a table of values. Now remember, it is all about the x, right? I even have a little note to you on the bottom here so that you will remember that because it is so important. It is all about the x, no repeats. We don't care about y. Y can repeat 100 times, it doesn't matter. It's only the x values that we are looking at. So if I look at this table right here, I am simply going to be looking at these x values, right? I do not care about the y values. All I'm doing is I'm looking at the x's, and that's it. So we look and we check to see if any of those repeat. Well, I've got a negative 8, positive 5, positive 2, negative 5, positive 8. I'm going to say they're all different, right? This is a function. I have no repeats. So we're just going to say x does not 
repeat. All right, over here, we have another relation. This time it's kind of made of straight lines. And again, we're going to be looking to see if any of our vertical lines have more than one point on them. So if I start checking my vertical lines again, like we did before, here's a vertical line. It's got one point on it, right? This ordered pair would be like negative four something. This vertical line, whoops, one point on it, right? So we're good. We just keep going. One point. Whoops. So the line, our given line, can only ever have one point on a vertical line. Because if it has more than one point, then that means that x value would be repeated. Whoops. So I just check all of my vertical lines, right? I go through my whole entire graph and I look at all of the vertical lines, and I just make sure that each of these pink lines has only one point on it. So here's a point for that one, there's a point, there's a point, right? And you don't have to draw all these vertical lines. Eventually, you're just gonna look at it. And sometimes, teachers will give you like a piece of spaghetti, and then you'll just take that spaghetti from the left side of the graph and move it over to the right side and just check and make sure that the line is crossing only one time, right? So this again is a function, passes the vertical line test. All right, over here, we've got some X and Y values. Again, we are only looking at the X's, right? We do not care about the Y's, not today. Check and see if we have anything Repeat it. I would say that there's definitely something repeating. Hopefully you see it too. But if we look at this, we've got a five, and then we've got that five again. So that is not working. So we're gonna say this one is not a function. And for my reason, I would say that x equals five is repeating. Can't have that, right? No repeats. Okay, this one over here, I'm going to write some ordered pairs for this one so we can see exactly what it is that we're looking at. So this negative 2 is matching up with positive 2. So there's an ordered pair. Then this 3 is matching up with positive 2. This 8 matches up with 7. And this 11 matches up with 7. Now, don't get confused. Don't look at this and say, uh-oh, we've got two 2's and two 7's. It's not a function. Those are the y values, remember. And we don't care about y, right? We are only looking at the x's. And we've got a negative two, a positive three, a positive eight, a positive 11. This is absolutely a function. And that's because, again, x does not repeat. So there we go. So those are some examples of functions and non-functions, sometimes they call them. Just remember, it is all about the x, okay? We do not care about the y's at all. It's all about the x. I think I just wanna show you one more thing before I end the video. So let me just go back up here to this graph for a second. Okay, this graph here that we already said this was a function right here. So I'm just gonna erase what I have written down on this graph right here. Okay, this one was a function. Now, on your notes, I want you to realize this is a function here. I just wanna show you a quick example of something that would not be a function, okay? So, if I had, like this line here is going this way, okay? This, this parabola is going this way. If this parabola had gone this way, then this would not be a function. Okay, I just want you to see this before I go. If it was going this way, like kind of sideways, like the letter C, this would not be a function. And the reason would be because, like if I look at this vertical line right here, there would be a point here and another point here. Do you see how that would hit it twice? So that means this would have ordered pairs of positive one, negative one, and then positive one, negative four and a half maybe. And that X equals positive one would be repeated. 
So you don't wanna have two points on the same vertical line, okay? So if you have a parabola this way, that kind of looks like an upside down U, that's fine because each vertical line has only one point on it. But if this parabola were turned kind of sideways, like the letter C, then it would not be a function because this vertical line would have two points on it right here. So I just wanted you to see that um, because I, I just feel like you need to see an example both ways so that you really understand that. All right, so anyway, let me get rid of this right here. We'll just stick to our original notes, and hopefully this was helpful. If you have any questions, please ask me in class tomorrow, and if I am not your teacher, make sure you are asking your teacher. Have a great day.